For Global Business Update, Rotu Sodiri joins us now. Good morning, Rotu. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Rafai. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Yeah, so um, we're starting to tech today. Meta has uh, announced, made some announcements as far as uh, artificial intelligence is concerned. So they're going to be embedding Meta AI across all their products. So WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook. So for example, if you are having a WhatsApp conversation in a group, you can ask Meta AI if you're debating something or you want to get data on something. You should still check the information but meta ai will actually answer you in mid chat if you want to get any information same thing uh, on facebook and also the same thing on instagram so the ai race is really uh, heating up another update is this incredible photo realistic um, metaverse conversation that's mark zuckerberg in a conversation with lex friedman lex friedman is a podcaster and they were having they were testing it out this what you're about to see is literally the most realistic looking representation of a human face in conversation. Before you were talking about Kaduna and the judges having virtual hearings going forward, I mean, it's going to be really incredible if this scales. Of course, you have internet, you need, you need proper broadband penetration and a number of other things. That's Lex Friedman. So here's his tweet where he was, he, he announced this to everyone. He says, here's my conversation with Zuckerberg, third time on the podcast, but this time, we talked in the metaverse as photorealistic avatars. This is one of the most incredible experiences of my life. It really felt like we were talking in person. He was in Texas. Zuckerberg was in San Francisco. So take, take, take a listen to the convo. And Zuckerberg explains it as well. I mean, this is just really incredible. I don't know how to describe it with, with words. It really feels like it feels like we're in the same room. Yeah. It feels like the future. This is yeah. truly, truly incredible. I just wanted to take it in. I'm still getting used to it. It's like, it's you. It's really you. But you're not here with me, right? You're there wearing a headset, and I'm wearing a headset. It's it's really, really incredible. So what? Um, can you describe what it takes currently for us to appear so photorealistic to each other? Yeah. So, I mean, for, for background, we both did these scans for... Uh, this research project that, that we have at Meta called Kodak Avatars. And the idea is that instead of actually, instead of our avatars being cartoony, um, and instead of actually transmitting a video, what it does is we've sort of scanned ourselves and a lot of different expressions, and we've built a computer model of sort of each of our faces and, and bodies and um, the different expressions that we make. And collapse that into a, a codec that then when you have the headset on your head, it can, it, it sees your face, it sees your expression, and it can basically send um, an encoded version of what you're supposed to look like over the wire. So, um, so in addition to being photorealistic, it's also actually much more bandwidth efficient than transmitting a, a full video or especially a 3D immersive video of, of a whole scene like this. All right, so Mr. Cross, bring things back on in another reality here. Mr. Cardozo, our new CBN governor, you know, if you check today's business, uh, this day newspaper, Nigeria's newspaper record is promising a, well, he wants to address FX liquidity, which is under his purview, but then he was also promising businesses of a friendly climate. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. He also had that announcement where he says he wants to get the economy to one trillion. Is that within the purview of the Central Bank of Nigeria? I think he probably should just be focusing on uh, the monetary policy side of things and leaving a one trillion dollar economy and business climate to the uh, fiscal side. But everyone, everyone can read that article in today's uh, this day newspaper. Jobs in Imo states. I know there's elections coming up in November in Kogi, Imo, and elsewhere. Here is the governor, uh, Hope Uzodima, promising youth four thousand jobs in Europe and Canada. I think. <laughs> to negotiate with the European Union companies and Canadian companies. They are sending us special areas of this new scheme, which our youth will also learn. And by December this year, 4,000 Imo youth will be employed in Europe. Comes, the governor will pay for your ATK 
Kings. Yeah, so that just, it made me think about the lottery of life. There's something I want to show you a quote from Warren Buffett about circumstances that lead people to where they are. And I was just thinking about the emo youth and how helpless some of them are. When I was a kid, I got all types of good things. I had the advantage of a home where people talked about interesting things. And I had intelligent parents. And I went to decent schools. I don't think I could have been raised with a better pair of parents. That was enormously important. I didn't get money from my parents. And I really didn't want it. But I was born at the right time and right place as a white American at a particular time. So you use that and you look at Emo State's metrics now. Um, and in, so IGR is 20 billion. FAC is 72. So 22% to 78% ratio. Their foreign debts, 83.6 million. Domestic debt is over 200. Um, you then have, if you look at the, uh, what, is, what else are their metrics now? Ease of doing business, the 13th, GDP 7 trillion, capital importation only 3 million between 2019 and 2021. They have one of the lowest per capita education spends in the entire country at 381 naira. Health spend is 581. You look at inflation and unemployment. Now, unemployment using the Yemi Kale days before they revised it. 26.5 headline, 33% food, way above the, um, the national average, 56.4% unemployment, and 25.9% uh, underemployment. That's where we are in, uh, in Imo states uh, right now. Oh, and then uh, finally, uh, I'm sure you saw that interview with the Arisco Foods uh, CEO. Yeah, yeah, Here is uh, his right of reply, excerpt. If you don't like it, buy another one. Mm. But because it's, it's, I mean, people tell her, don't destroy this product. Mm. It's, an, it's a lie. It will abuse you. Go to, people should go and read what she posted to show you that she's determined to kill us. Uh, so, so why must I leave her? How much will you be suing for? Five billion. Five damage, billion. I have paid this line of $15 million from two customers, and now it's suspended. From China, fifty so, million dollars to create great good customers. Because they say, I'm not likely to pay them the credit if they give me. So, so this letter of apology is not enough. Well, because she never posted it as we agreed. She hasn't posted this yes. apology on she, social she media. She don't bring the thing down. Does, does, does she has a copy of this letter? She, she signed it. She has that copy. So she she it's, agreed to to post this. You just want to say here. If well. she don't post it there, we are going for five billion. All right, so um, she, I checked her Facebook. She hasn't taken it down. I've spoken to her husband, who is coming on the Global Business Report with Dineve F. Young, uh, his lawyer, to reply this. And they said the, the letter she signed was under this duress. What I did find on her Facebook page, she, she, by the way, she's a nursing mother, has a one-year-old. She, she talks about trade with, in her church. So she went, this was an export drive they had on Sunday last week. I think we have a post on where she said that she went to the church in Ogudu. I went to Ogudu where I was invited to speak on mini expectation. On my way out, I was invited by the policeman from Ogudu Police Station. So she was actually arrested at church and then taken from Lagos to Abuja. And by, but she's been released now. So is, it continues. That's all we have for, this, for today. Okay, this is becoming interesting. And I think after all of this, probably companies will understand the importance of a proper PR manager. Because I don't know the case, but the number one basic law in PR 101 that I know, when matters like this arise, is not the CEO of the company that should be the front line talking in an interview. That's one thing you cannot argue with me on that I know very well. But when I saw him on the interview as a writer reply, speaks volumes and I think the comp a lot will happen, but let's yeah. just which we, we can't take sides, you know, he's yeah. got his right of reply and other people get their own right of reply. But as regards the metaphors, I mean, that's the future. And as regards the man that say companies are waiting uh, abroad to employ Emo youths, can he list the names of the companies that the job requirement? Can he provide have? jobs in Emo? No, no, no. Let's let's even list the companies. Let's see them and the job they ask and the request for the Emo young I people. Feel so first. sorry for. Us. So well, it's election mean, season. It's I think it's we're election going to season. You hear this more. thing? We're going to hear yeah. one more in terms of from Emo state and the other states who are going to be, um, you know, um, um, off cycle elections. Yeah. But on the Erisco matter, to be honest, I. I watched the interview yesterday with Boston and kudos to him. He handled it really well in terms of trying to engage Chief Eric Omeofia, the founder of Erisco. I can understand his passion and I actually feel quite sorry because when you hear the challenges that Nigerian companies go, manufacturers go to, to maintain their business, you can understand. However, I feel that they missed an opportunity there. And he did more harm than good to his brand by the things that he said and revealed yesterday. It's sad to see a Nigerian company almost you know, being bashed and at the risk of going down because of this scandal. But I hope it's a lesson to other manufacturers. You shouldn't be, you should, high-handedness, business, 
your customers no. always right? I, I think, in fact, we can take sides here. Mm. Is there something about consumer rights and about freedom of expression? Mm. The lady in question was ar ar arrested. What did she do? She bought the product. I think it's tomato paste. That's right. Yes. And mixed, she then, he said. Eh? He said it was mixed. And he said it was mixed. So anyone. And she, wrote, and she wrote a review yeah. of what she took and said, oh, there's too much salt in it. Sugar. Uh, sugar. Uh, sugar, yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, in it. Now, every consumer should have the right to express an opinion mm. about product. And that is why I think that, you know, the uh, Consumer Protection Agency has even had to apologize to her. So if you buy bread, you don't feel comfortable with it and it's branded, then of course you can express an opinion. So I think there's, there's too, much, uh, too much of a storm in a teacup mm. here. And I hope that the affected woman will press for her rights. Uh, that, that I think is what is important here. Uh, if uh, it is a fake product that she bought or a mixed product, as yeah. you called it, then the onus is on the company to offer the clarification and explanation, not to hand her. Uh, so if tomorrow uh, you buy suya by the roadside, and uh, you <laughs> said, this suya is not tasting well, so you will get, you will get killed or, or attacked for just expressing an opinion. That's how ridiculous it is. Yes. As, for, as for meta, as for meta, as for meta, yeah. the point here. It's about what risk does artificial intelligence pose. Yeah, yeah. I know it's the future. You know, technology will continue to advance. But what are the likely risks? Because what Meta is even trying to do, they are trying to uh, come up with a phone, you know, a smartphone that you just wave in front of yes. your face <laughs> and you can get into this, uh, you know, virtual space yes. where you can exploit uh, artificial intelligence. Mm. Don't forget that artificial intelligence is what screen actors in the US, studios, producers, yeah. you know, even actors yeah. are beginning to protest about. So it's about striking the balance. Yeah. And this is where regulation comes in. Mm. You know, I think regulation will be most important. What has happened in Imo State yes. is incredible. It is ridiculous. <laughs> A governor who should create an enabling environment for people in the state exactly. to have jobs, mm. now saying that you will in fact pay Air tickets to fly. for people to go and take jobs in Europe <laughs> to and in Canada. <laughs> I mean, okay, the, I know it's campaign season, but can we appeal to these politicians that they should stop campaigning in poetry? Right. Because I think Opus Odima was being poetic in that particular instance. How does he want to govern? He, by expatriating <laughs> all the important talents in the state? That's a wrong line to yeah. choose. Right. And it should be so corrected, mm. and it should stand corrected. Mm. We'll take a short break now. Thank you. Thank you.